First little gotcha here, um, and it's in regards to the fuel vent clip. Uh, so I got to the stage where it mentions um, getting everything mass drilled here with the fuel tank um, cap flange red deal thing here. Um, it's already final size, it's ready to go, uh, but I still wanted to get it together and get the little vent clip on there. Uh, just make sure that it operates as intended and it won't according to, if you at least just follow the plan straight forward. Uh, so the first issue that I, uh, that I discovered is in regards to the hole placement on this, uh, on the vet clip here. So if you were to just straight Clico this on here, um, you're probably not gonna be able to see on camera, um, you may have to trust me, but that flange or the uh, vet clip is interfering uh, with the angle of the flange here. So the vet clip is kind of kicked out uh, to the side. So I know I'm gonna have to make a slight modification to the side of it there, 
Of course, the van should, or the uh, the plant shouldn't have to reference that. Like at this point, you get to the stage. Okay, I see that it's interfering. I'm gonna go ahead and modify it. Uh, but that led to a, a further, uh, further thinking about this vent clip, of how the heck it's used in the future. Um, so um, I was like wondering where. So I know the the fuel vent line comes all the way through here. And it comes through these wider holes, uh, which are gonna have SP. 437-4 uh, little bushings in there, uh, which then the vent line will, will sit inside of. But then when it came to the vent clip here, it wasn't clear what happens with it. Um, it's got a small hole. It's got a very, very small, like standard, um, standard size, what, 332nd hole in it, uh, which obviously this big guy would not fit inside of it. Um, so what it actually, uh, or the, uh, the intended outcome here, um, not learned in the 10 plans, but actually learned to the 14 plans is to have the vent clip here upsized. So that hole is supposed to upsize it to a 7 uh, which then allows for this fancy dancy bushing to then sit inside that vent clip, which then receives the vent line um, all the way and it kind of sits inside of there. So uh, that's just another example uh, where having the RB14 plans is helpful uh, because again, these plans are different. Uh, but they share a lot of similarities uh, when it comes to these individual parts here. Uh, so if I was to do this again, I'd probably drill ahead of time like the 14 plans call for. Because in the 14 plans, I'll show you, I took a uh, picture of my laptop inside the house. Um, but hopefully you'll see there. Uh, but they mentioned getting that done ahead of time before actually removing and separating parts. Uh, and I think the idea there is you're working with a piece of material that's being held firmly. It's got nice long rigidity. You can work with the whole thing versus some dinky little tiny little part uh, that you're trying to drill inside of. So anywho, I'm gonna shut up now. We'll get the next one drilled and then I'll get these buffed out and uh, smoothed over, edges smoothed over. And then I'll also, when I go to prep it for this one, uh, for each one I'm going to have to uh, give it a slight radius uh, to kind of walk itself away from the edge of that flange where it kind of lifts up on the side of it. So I'm gonna do that as well. And then uh, we'll get to moving forward. So get this other one drilled out on camera and uh, we'll move forward. Alrighty, there's the final product. Again, kind of looks like the holes there, where it'll receive a bushing and then uh, the vent line will be able to sit inside of that bushing. So there you go. Hope you saw the camera there. Uh, what I was doing, filing down a VA141 flange, uh, which is this guy here, is I ordered two of them extra, and I was filing that down to make room uh, by a skin stiffener here um, to make a fuel return line. And I'm not gonna use this, uh, more of just kind of future-proofing while I'm here, I'm adding the ability to, for the uh, tank in the future to have a fuel return line for fuel injection. Um, again, I do not plan on doing that right now, but figured it doesn't hurt to buy. I think these were $20 each. Um, kind of future proof it. I know if you want to install it on a flying airplane, um, you have to take your take off, uh, add this after the fact, run the, uh, have the issues of having um, chips inside your tank, then getting it vacuumed out. Uh, it can kind of be, it uh, sounds like a pain. So future proofing this, I know we want to keep this RV10 uh, forever. So in the future, if we ever choose to do fuel injection, uh, we'll have the ability to do so. So we'll have a fuel return line. Um, so it'd be just forward. And again, these videos are not how-to guides by any means. This is just what I'm doing on our build here. Um, but I'm copying what others have done, uh, which is putting it a little bit forward of the fuel vent line uh, right here. And that kind of keeps it out of the way of the middle here. Um, but I have to be careful because on the inside of here, there's a skin stiffener. So uh, on this left one here, I did have to um, 
make just a slight, uh, slight radius there, kind of bending down between rivets there, not going between the two, um, but just kind of staying a little bit top, a little bit on the on, anywho. Yeah, so anyways, I ground down this uh, slightly to get around the stiffener, leaving all the rivet holes still and also staying above uh, that direct path between those two rivets. Uh, but this now allows me to, I'll move the camera around here shortly, uh, but it allows me to get it on the other side of a skin stiffener, uh, still keep it up nice and high, nice and tight out of the way, um, out of the way of future problems. So I'll show you real quick, my camera battery is dying here, so hopefully it doesn't die. Yeah, so hopefully that's an angle here. It's a hard shot to get with my tripod wanting to dangle over the fuel tank, um, but you kind of see where I sharpied around it, where I took note of where I wanted to go. Uh, my plan right now is to send this guy Right there, keeping it, um, keeping it a little bit away from that stiffener. You won't be able to see on camera, but I do have, do have room between the uh, the flange itself and the skin. Probably about an eighth of an inch of clearance there, and probably an eighth of an inch of clearance uh, to that stiffener. So, uh, I'm liking this location. That should be fine there. Um, and again, not using it. My plan is to just plug it, uh, get it installed in here, and then just plug it with a um, three eighths NPT. Uh, I believe that is what it is, but anyways, they plug it with a fuel fitting that just plugs the hole and forget about it, then in the future if I ever want to use it, it's there. So, that's that. Moving on. Yeah, so anyways, next step here is removing um, all the Clicos here, getting this fully disassembled, ready for dimpling. So, we'll get to it. Alrighty, <laughs> this is a lot slower moving than I thought it would be, um, and a little bit more messy than I thought it would be. I have a lot to learn still. Um, yeah, I have a lot to learn, uh, very slow moving, so trying to keep low expectations now going forward. Glad I didn't start with the big batch here. Um, but 
Uh, what I wanted to get to real quick here is these little holes you have to fill. These are those tooling holes that come from vans uh, from when they hold it down and the press that they're using. Anyways, they're just tooling holes. Um, so in order to get those filled, you either have to purchase or have someone who has uh, larger rivets with larger dice, then set those rivets to seal and close that up, or follow the plans. The plans say to fabricate a piece of aluminum and have that uh, riveted on, like say like three rivets or four rivets, um, cover that up. What I did is I found on Amazon, they have sealed rivets. I think they're 3 16th, pretty sure. Um, but anyways, sealed rivets, they work well. Um, I think it was a hundred of them for $10. Um, so pretty good deal. I would say 25% of them were junk, uh, where they have a steel shank uh, that I'm assuming has a, a bulb near the near the, the top part there, and then the aluminum is formed over that. And in the forming process, um, I'd say probably 25% of them developed cracks on the aluminum. So just know when you buy these, uh, some of them are going to be trash, uh, but they work well, uh, especially for my purpose here. I've literally just taken it, yes, yeah, so take a little bit of uh, tank sealant on there. Third inside, I have found that the hand squeezer doesn't work. They're just really, really heavy duty and it was more of a pain to try to use the hand one. Um, but this uh, air powered one here does really well uh, with getting that set. So now it's really easy to go back through and the back side, it already is sealed. It's that aluminum's already sealed, but I'll still throw a little bit of a radius, I guess, on the back side. I don't really know what the hell I'm doing. Just wanna make sure I don't have tanks that leak. Um, but on this side, I'll just kind of dabble over the top there uh, with sealant, but makes things easy um, using these sealed rivets. Day two riveting, got Prego over there. Yesterday did those parts there, probably didn't get really anything on camera. Um, I'm finding that I don't want to touch the camera once I already have Pro Seal all over my hands. Um, so the camera just sat there and recorded and filled up 128 gigs. Um, so probably not gonna record anything in depth here, um, but at least a quick check in. Uh, this is the fuel cap, our fuel cap flange that I did yesterday as well as the drain over there in the corner maybe you can see it. Anyways, came together looking real nice. The other side of this uh, fuel cap flange, very, very clean. Uh, probably not gonna be able to get an angle with this camera on a tripod, but very clean, really happy there. Uh, but again, not gonna get any in-depth shots here because of the issue of filming, right? Yep, very so, sticky. Very sticky. So we'll probably do a time-lapse over there. If you're looking for an in-depth video, where can they find an in-depth video? Who has them? Plane Lady has a good one, and then Vans Aircraft has a really in-depth one that goes over a lot. Dang girl, yeah, that's right. I yeah. watched them. <laughs> I know, yeah, she watched with me. It's a family affair here. Um, so yeah, Plain Lady did an awesome video, at least the first two that I've seen up until this point, um, going over certain things about it where plans are severely lacking, where it doesn't go over detail as to what you're supposed to do. Um, so that's awesome. And then yeah, the Vans video, really helpful um, and really in-depth. So this is not gonna be the normal um, Austin Mankey fun, exciting camera footage type stuff, but it'll still be fun. Look at that belly, by the way. <laughs> she is, how many days out are we? I'm 38 weeks and five days today. Ready so. to pop. Almost there. <laughs> yeah, we're running the risk. Um, I told her if she starts getting contractions, she has to wait if I have a batch of Pro Seal going. <laughs> um, I will have to give her a two hour, she has to give me a two hour warning to finish Pro Sealing because we're not gonna, we're not stopping for for nothing, <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah. So anyways, what she's doing right now is she is loading up the rivets. I went ahead and um, gave all of them a bath in acetone for a while, put them in a little glass jar, swirl them around, let them sit and think about their actions for um, probably in a half an hour or so. She's grabbing them right now. But yeah, look at how that acetone was clear before dropping them in there. And they are, uh, you can see all the oil that came off of them. So they definitely do have oil when they come from 
whatever factory they're made in. So again, swirled in acetone, we have gloves on to keep our oils off it. We're loading the back side for the stiffeners and then we'll put tape over it and then it'll actually be back riveted uh, with these stiffeners here in place. So these here sit like over that with a whole bunch of tank seal on it. So anyhow, we'll get to loading, get to building, get to having a baby. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, welcome back. Uh, so, no video. Video is really hard to do uh, filming solo here. So, I have Prego on the back side of the camera there. <laughs> and we're going to be doing skin stiffeners, or at least one skin stiffener. Take this bad boy, load him onto one of them. The rest will kind of fall into place and then give it a little shimmy shimmy. And you're, you're going to see me get pro seal on these gloves and that's fine. I have actually not changed my gloves all day today, at least going through all these stiffeners here. I'll show you why. Anyways, pushing between each one, your fingers do get sore. But I'm trying to squeeze out. <laughs> Squeeze out a lot of the sealant there. Get that dimple to set itself in that little, get the dimples to nest. Those look good. Now next, how I've not had to change my gloves out. And I do have two pairs of gloves on in case they get really nasty. Um, but I've been able to use just the same pair of gloves and just wiping off, wiping off any of the obnoxious amounts of sealant. I don't know acetone eventually may break these gloves down, but I'll just change them out then. And keeping the garage door open. <laughs> and keeping the garage door open. I'm not using MEK by the way. There's MEK right over there, um, but I'm really trying to limit my use of it. It's great. It cuts through Pro Seal much faster than acetone, uh, but it's much more of a noxious smell. I think it's. Probably worse for you. It's great for cleaning the tools at the end of this, um, but I don't want to sit here and expose myself to MEK all day if acetone um, works just as well with the open garage. So anyways, pretty clean. So now, um, you'll see they have a whole bunch, you know, getting close. They have a whole bunch of sealant on them already, but I don't care because as long as you're straight up and down matching the reflection, Good? Mm -hmm. And then if I want to check them, just a quick swipe on the face of it. And I've not cleaned it off this whole session here. But just quickly swiping it, you can see that's nicely set rivet, perfectly centered on the dimple. I'm not worrying about checking for size because I know what I'm looking for. Um, but I, I was curious in the very beginning, and actually I did one, did a whole line of them, cleaned some off, not with MEK, not with acetone, but just wiped it off with a rag, and then tested it with the, uh, the tool just to make sure um, that my visual gauge was working. And it is, so anyways. Knock out the rest of these real quick. Alrighty, and then real quick, I'm not gonna do it on camera because I'm down to barely any left and I want to see if I can get one more stiffener on. Uh, but what I normally do as far as the rivet heads go is just squeeze out the remainder I'm at the very end, squeeze it out on here. Woohoo! That's the first <laughs> mess I've made. Um, squeeze out the remainder onto this plexiglass here, pack the front end of this little fuel tube. Let's see if I can pack any from here. All right, you may have to play make believe. You'll see it in their videos, or at least in the van's video. Uh, but pack the front of it in a glob. Kind of packs the, the front end there and then come over here to a rivet. We'll do that front one there. Uh, but just place this over the top of it, give it a nice little swirl, and then give it that little Hershey Kiss effect. Oh. And she's ready. Um, cool. And that will dry and seal it. And then also I'll go ahead and do the fillet. Um, the fillet, I'm just using the same exact method mentioned on the van stuff, um, but popsicle stick, sand it down the edges, and then going through after 
and just making sure it's a nice bead all the way down, uh, all the way down the edge of it, and taking off any extra. Um, but that's really it. Again, you know, I don't think you need to keep going through pairs and pairs of gloves, because um, again, I just brushed my hands on it. Um, but take a little acetone, and I think this is quicker than going through a whole bunch of different pairs of gloves just between each stiffener after you touch stuff. Uh, just give yourself a quick wash down and you're ready to go. No mess. <laughs> That's the goal. Alrighty, quick check in here. Um, I have gotten pretty far. I have all of the inner ribs uh, put in there. And honestly, it's gone together really nicely. It's not nearly as bad as I expected it to be. Um, and I think it's just working clean and not letting the Pro Seal get all over you. Um, Helps a lot. Um, but yeah, it's gone together really nicely. This has so far been the ugliest rib. Um, it's sealed, it's all good. Uh, but that's the ugliest one so far and I feel very confident with it. It all has the uh, Forbidden Hershey Kiss uh, chocolates on the back of the rivets there. Um, but yeah, it's overall it's looking really, really nice. Um, and how I'm doing it, and I apologize for not getting all this on camera, because uh, what happens is once I have the camera set up, I don't want to just burn footage. I don't want to touch the camera um, after I get it set up. So I left it running the other day and I have probably at least an hour and a half of just random footage that's not in depth. So anywho, too hard to record for you. Um, but summed up what I'm doing is you'll notice a whole lot of syringes here. So I originally picked up these 100 milliliter um, uh, syringes from Amazon. They work great, uh, but for me, they're a little bit too big. I figured just use them, I had them. So knocked out all of those and then I was running out of them. So prime same day delivery um, with all these 60 milliliter versions and these work a lot better. Um, you don't end up still using the whole 60 mils um, but a little bit easier to, to navigate get in there to get you a nice fillet bead after the fact and anyways really easy to dispense and I think this um, I owe the cleanliness of this operation up until this point to these little syringes because you can fill it up clean off the backside with acetone uh, clean off the outside with acetone so it's a clean surface so the pro seal is all contained. You can run a nice, run a nice fat bead along the edge of it, all the way around, and then come in after the fact with a popsicle stick, and do that same method that Vans has of kind of laying it flat first of all, and then running the the two angles down the side, leaving a uh, somewhat of a ridge uh, along the the rivet holes. Um, so, anyways, it's working really, really well. All right, I'm gonna test out a new product here. Um, I have no affiliation whatsoever um, with a company called Mountain Ride, Mountain Ride Aviation. Uh, but saw on, I think it was the Facebook RV10 Builder page, uh, someone shared a product that they are now, I think 3D printing, uh, but a little squeezer attachment, uh, which is really, really clever. And I really, I, first time I saw it, I wanted to, wanted to buy it. So anyways, I purchased some, again, not affiliated whatsoever. Uh, with them. I just thought it was a clever idea and wanted to support another builder's company. Um, but the idea here is it clips over... Oh, that's unfortunate. You can't use it in this orientation. That's unfortunate. Uh, but the idea here, what I was going to hope to do, is uh, it. Uh, you'll see here it slides over a die and then it allows you to uh, rivet and it squeezes keeps positive pressure on it um, while you're squeezing and the idea is it puts pressure on the material and pulls out that gap and really pulls the material together and I saw they posted a, a tank building video and wanted to give it a shot here um, but in this orientation it will not work uh, because it needs to go it would need to fit on the top part uh, which it's not designed to do that it is just too too thick um, so Maybe I'll, uh, I'll cut it down. That's what I'll do. I'll cut this down and see if it works. Because uh, I do have one uh, that has the, the edge of the flange. It's just slightly raised. So I'll get a close shot of it. I'll cut this down real quick, modify it, and we'll see if it works. All right, I cut it down. Let's see if it works. Uh, you'll see I took off uh, quite a bit of the top porch in there to make room for the die. So 
shave that down a little bit. Let's see if we can get a quick shot. All right, so it'll be this guy here, and you'll notice, hopefully you can see on camera, um, but I have a little bit of sealant kind of acting as a cushion right now. Hopefully you can see that. So the idea here is if this works, it'll squeeze out the, it'll compress it while riveting and giving you a nice flat surface. We'll see if it works. Holy smokes. That worked really well. Again, not affiliated with this channel or the, uh, the company whatsoever. Um, it's called Mountain Ride Aviation, uh, but he sells packs of these things and that will be very useful going forward. So shout out to them making a cool product. And uh, yeah, it worked. So you'll notice really, really tight. Uh, there's that guy right there and it is nice and tight. I actually watched the sealant get squeezed out while it was, while it was riveting. <laughs> That is really neat. Alrighty, quick late night check in here. Uh, hopefully this is in frame, but I am testing out real quick before uh, before moving forward with bending my uh, fuel float uh, for the fuel sender. Actually, I can get that in frame. Anyways, before bending this, I went ahead and um, just threw it in here, Clico this end rib, Clicoed in the fuel sender dealio here uh, with these larger Clicos. It actually works pretty well to hold it temporarily. It grabs into those nut plates pretty well. So anyways, Clico that in there. You will notice um, there are two different ones. Um, so there's one sender for the left side, one sender for the right side. Uh, they do not work interchangeably. That was the first thing on that I found out. Um, when I put one in here and it was cockeyed to the side, I realized, ah, okay. Uh, one is for left tank, one is for right tank. So that was the first thing that I discovered. Um, second thing, um, I understand bending these uh, can be a pain, and I know a lot of builders have bent theirs incorrectly, either starting from the wrong side or forgetting that there's a tail end that sits inside here that goes downward there before connecting into the arm. Um, so I, I wanted to avoid causing any issues and ruining the bend on this guy here. Uh, so I went ahead and used just 12 gauge, some leftover 12 gauge Romex household wire. Um, and cut it down to this length here uh, for the fuel float and did some did some practice runs. Uh, you'll notice I did one practice run where I started from one side and went to the other side and discovered this was wrong. Um, did another practice run here, uh, which was correct. And then with my ground wire, because it didn't have any sheathing on it, made the same bend, uh, which I'm able to actually snap into place uh, temporarily here. It's a little bit smaller than the actual fuel float wire, so I'm not, um, I don't think I'm compromising the clips or anything by uh, snapping it in and then unsnapping it because it is smaller uh, or thinner in diameter. Uh, but it's real nice because I can actually test the fit, make sure that I understand what the heck I'm doing. Alrighty, went ahead and bent the wire, uh, pretty much just matching the, matching the plans of course, I'm uh, matching what I did uh, with that test wire with the uh, the copper one. Uh, but anyways, it turned out really well. Uh, so I have it in here, did some minor adjusting uh, to get it to be happy clearing uh, the vent line stiffener and the stiffener over here and reaching uh, full top and bottom and really happy with how it turned out. Uh, did help to use uh, actually footing pliers of all things just to get minor bends on things. I didn't want to overly stress like yank on this thing while it's attached in here uh, and didn't want to have to keep pulling it in and out. Uh, but anyways, taking footing pliers, if you needed to bend it uh, in any direction, just giving it slight uh, slight bends, uh, whether it was uh, getting a little more down or up or side to side, whatever, fluting pliers worked well. Um, but yeah, worked really well. And here is the, uh, here's a handy dandy Harbor Freight uh, multimeter. And hopefully you can see it here. Uh, full tank, 32-ish, and empty, 48-ish. Uh, so it's working as intended. So really cool, really happy, and time to move on. Time to actually go to bed. So we'll see you tomorrow. Alrighty, so what I was doing here is I was actually demonstrating how to clean out the inside of those syringes. Um, so earlier on, I was under the assumption that it was kind of a use it once, then you have to trash it. Uh, but then I saw a post, I think on Vans Air Force, where someone mentioned that you can clean them out. Um, so sure enough, you can clean them out, just make sure that it cures up. Um, and then you take that plunger and you can actually kind of shove it back inside and it breaks loose that pro seal and kind of pulls it off of the walls. Um, and then what you end up with is a whole bunch of pro seal near the tip of it 
uh, which then you can take an air compressor to safely, you'll see why shortly, uh, but safely, and uh, it'll actually expel that Pro Seal uh, violently out the other end, um, especially if the syringe um, happens to still be in there, which you'll see here shortly. But anyways, that's how I cleaned those out, and uh, I ended up getting probably a good three to four uses out of each one near the end. Um, they definitely did start to stick a little bit more, I think, as they became um, a little bit more, I guess, sanded down or whatever, kind of like how you want, uh, how you buff something with scotch Bright before primering it or putting pro seal on it anyways they get a little bit of abrasion on them and pro seal tends to start to stick a little bit heavier on them but anyways worked well um i know we are really really far into this video here we are officially at 35 36 minutes or so um so we're going to end it next video will involve the uh, back baffle getting it fully closed out doing the pressure test making sure it has no leaks and whatnot and uh, going from there. So anyways, I'm going to leave you here with a nice little blooper uh, that hopefully you'll, you'll enjoy. So get to it. I didn't like that. My tail cone is right here. No dents, but holy crap. That must have just missed the tail cone and hit the uh, popcorn ceiling there. <laughs> I have no clue where that went, uh, but this is a perfect outro uh, for the true viewers who make it all the way to the end. You guys get the glorious content. So uh, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching all the way to the portion of me almost putting a huge dent in our tail cone. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Adios. <laughs>